Amen. Yes, uh, I'm happy to be able to be sharing the word of God today. And uh, we're going to pray before hearing the word of God. As I am praying, I want you also to pray for yourself. You can pray for your heart to prepare your heart to be able to hear the word of God. So let us pray. Oh, Father God, we are happy to be in your presence today. We are happy to come to you, to you today. Oh, we've come, Father, to hear of your word. We have come to hear of your word. You are the God who speaks to his people. You are the God who always speaks a good word to your people. Oh, we believe uh, you today to hear a word uh, that comes from you, a word uh, that release, a word uh, that help, a word uh, that support. Uh, and we are believing you today, oh Father God. We are believing you today, oh Jesus. Uh, we are believing, oh Rande Mboshenda. We receive uh, your grace. We have received it. Uh, and we say thank you, oh Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So today we're gonna share. Uh, I have post in the in the group uh, all the scripture we're gonna use today. So if you have like on your phone, you can just go in the chat and you'll see all the scripture of today because I'm, I will use like four scriptures. So I don't want us to spend too much time going to look for the scripture in the Bible. And then when you have time, you can go through the old Bible to check them again for yourself. So the first scripture I'm gonna read. It is from the book of Ma uh, Matthew 6.33. Matthew uh, 6.33. The Bible say, that's what Jesus Christ speaking. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all the things will be given to you as well. Amen. So the first scripture it is what uh, Jesus Christ was telling his disciple and he was telling them to seek first the kingdom of God one of the main reason uh, I, I choose the scripture today because uh, as citizen of the kingdom of God we have to know first that Jesus Christ taught us to seek uh, his kingdom now if you don't know what is the kingdom of God you must spend your whole life seeking for it. You must spend uh, go all over for hundred thousand years seeking for it and never find it. So that's the case. If uh, you don't know what is the kingdom of God, what is uh, the kingdom you are looking for? But as for us children of God, God want us to understand first His word and to understand the way our God think. For somewhere in the Bible, uh, God said to the to the people that when the level where your knowledge stop, that's where my level and my understanding start. And many people take that scripture to think that our thinking will always be down. Our thinking will always be down at a level that cannot be compared to God. And even some people go further to say that who can understand God that God is so big you cannot understand him yes that's a good way of seeing it and saying it but you can understand God when God accepts to be the person teaching you who God is although God is big although God is the everlasting although God is eternal he has accepted himself to be the teacher when Jesus Christ came on earth, he came as the son of God. He came as God in a human form to teach all of us who God is. Now, one of the identity of God is God is the king. So when Jesus Christ is telling us, seek first the kingdom of God, is in is 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 in short, telling us to seek the king of the kingdom. Because it will do you no good if you are seeking the kingdom of God 
and you don't want any business with Jesus. You don't want to deal with Jesus. You just say, okay, me, I'm just, I just want to know the kingdom of God. I just want to go to the kingdom of God, but you don't want to do anything with Jesus. No, it, you won't go far. For Jesus said, I am the true, the way, the life, and the light. That's what you say. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the bread. Jesus is the lamb of God that take away our sin. So, any relation you want to have with the kingdom of God, everything pass through Jesus. And Jesus is the king of king. So, in a way, when Jesus Christ was telling his disciple. When Jesus Christ was telling us, seek first the kingdom of God. He was telling us, seek me first, know me. Now, the knowledge of Jesus, the knowledge of knowing Jesus, knowing who Jesus is, it is not just uh, any form of knowledge you can get from a book. Because if uh if you are one of the person who, who follow the media and all those things you know that some uh, some islamic uh, those people from the arabic country those muslim they come out in a way to tell people that okay i know more of the bible than you i know more of the bible you go to a buddhist he will tell you that oh i know i know more bible than you christian and from there you have to understand that that is not the idea first of the Bible. And that is not the idea of Jesus Christ. That, okay, to know more of the Bible without knowing Jesus. And it is a thing that even Jesus told the Pharisees. He told them that you are seeking the book to know more of the book. But the book, the whole book, Talking about the Bible, talking about the scripture. The old book talk about me. So there is no way a Buddhist would go and look for the kingdom of God and then look for the scripture, read the scripture and come and tell a Christian that I know more of the Bible than you. But that, that's just waste of time. Everything in the Bible talk about Jesus. Now, no matter the level of the scripture and the Bible you know. If you don't know Jesus, you are wasting your time. Because Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is the light. Remember the thief who was on the cross with Jesus. I don't think he knew too much of the Bible. I don't think he knew the name of the prophet, the law, and all those stuff. He was a thief he himself. He was dying because he was a thief but although he was dying at the cross he met jesus one minute with jesus at the cross the fact that he recognized that jesus christ was not stealing like him jesus accepted to invite him in his kingdom jesus said to him this afternoon you will be with me in my kingdom now this is the jesus is the true, the bread, the way, and the light. This is the Jesus. Now, when Jesus Christ is telling people that seek first the kingdom of God, is telling all of us, you have to start with me. And when you start with me, then go and check the rest. When he's talking about that, uh, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, is asking us, to understand the way the king of the kingdom think. The people, when you read the part of Matthew 6, the people was talking, he was talking about people were looking for bread, they were looking for what to dress, what to wear. And he was telling them, okay, before you go and seek all those stuff, you need to start by seeking me first, seeking the way I think. Because the king, a king, the whole kingdom is based on the way the king of the kingdom think. What I'm trying to say, if the king of the kingdom doesn't lack red, 
in his temple, there will not be red. And even he can tell to the whole army, don't wear any red. W why? Because the king doesn't want the red. So, the way things, even in the kingdom of England, the way things are made, when you look at the kingdom, things are made looking at the feeling of the leader of the country. The kingdom of heaven, when you look at the throne, where the king is seated, that throne is designed according to the way of thinking of the king. So if the king doesn't want any wound, there will not be wood. There will not be wood on a... Sorry. There will not be any wood or... Uh, there will not be any wood on his, on his throne and the throne, will, they will not do anything on the throne that's linked to wood because he doesn't like wood. So that's the big things to understand with the scripture. Seek first the kingdom of God because most of the time, the scripture is through on people. Just when somebody wants to talk about other stuff, people just threw it and say, ah, you will need to seek first the kingdom of God. And it's making it seem like to seek the kingdom of God, you need to wake up from your house and you go outside. You go country, country, country. You travel 100 years seeking for the kingdom. That's how people make it think, make it look like you just keep on looking for the kingdom of God. You go for many countries as if you are looking something, you just go and look for it. No. Looking for the kingdom of God is looking first for the king of the kingdom. And when you meet the king of the kingdom, you start to get the way the king of the kingdom think. That's what it means to, to seek for the kingdom of God. You are looking for Jesus and you don't need 500 years to look for Jesus. You don't need uh, like uh, one year to look for Jesus. No, looking for Jesus is when you say, oh, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I want you to live in my heart. That is a one minute job. Jesus enter in your heart and when you do that one minute job and Jesus enter in your heart from that position now you start to look for the, his righteousness his righteousness is linked to the way because right thinking the righteousness of God is linked to the right way God think God always think right God always think clear. There is no confusion in the mind of the king. There is no darkness in the way Jesus Christ think. Jesus Christ always think right. On, from Monday to Sunday, he, his mind is already right. So it is the right thinking of God that God wants us to get. So that this is in in a in a nature what seeking the kingdom of God is. Now, we're going to, let's check now the scripture of uh, Mark 4, 14. We have it, for those who are connected, we have it uh, in the chat. M Mark 4, 14. And when you have time, you can now go and read the all Mark 4. Mark 4, talk to us about the sower. Mark 4, Mark 4 talked to us about the story of the sower. And when Jesus Christ started to explain the story of the sower, he said to us that the parable, he said to us that the sower saw the world. And in, this, in the parable of the sower, it is the story when the sower, a sower went out and he had the word, the word of God. And the word of God in the story first, it is seed. He had seed with him. And as he went out, the seed fell in four different grounds. And when he explained that story, the disciple didn't understand it. Then they ask him, tell us, what does it mean? What does this parable mean? And it, that's when he started to tell them that the sower saw 
the word of God. Now, as we are looking at the way of thinking and the way of the kingdom, I want us to look at this sower as he's sowing the word of God. We see the job that Jesus Christ came to do on earth. Jesus Christ came on earth. The only thing he was doing was sowing the word of God. Now, the word that Jesus Christ was sowing, as he was speaking to people, he was sowing in them the word of God. He was sowing in the people the word of the kingdom. When Jesus Christ came on earth, he was already telling us the way things work in the kingdom of heaven. He was telling us the method. As he was the king of the kingdom, there was no way he could have jumped the stage of teaching the word. With all the power that Jesus had, he had to preach the word. There was, he could not stand and just like stand in one place, release his hand and touch everybody's heart and the story is finished. No. As Jesus decided to do the job by preaching the word and as he was preaching the word, every word he was preaching became a seed. And the seed principle, it became the, a principle of the kingdom of heaven. For God to do what he wanted to do with us, he had to preach the word of God. Now, if a person come today and say to us, me, I want the kingdom of God, but I don't want to listen to the preaching. The thing will not work. Because as Jesus Christ came to present to us the kingdom of God, he did it by preaching. Now, for every other person, for all of us, every time when we are looking for the kingdom of God, what we are looking for, we are looking for preaching. We are looking for a word. We are looking for someone to tell us what that can transform us. The, the heaven, the kingdom of heaven, work with seed. Jesus had to take seed from heaven to bring it here on earth, to plant it on earth for him to have a miracle. All the miracle that we have received here on earth, a miracle that came through a process of a seed time and harvest time. Jesus, when he saw Peter, Matthew, Andre, uh, and other, other disciples, James uh, and John, when he saw them first, there was nothing in them that could tell us that those people are men of God. There was nothing. They were just fishermen and they didn't, they didn't study. They didn't took time to go like read the Bible every day as uh, we, see, we saw other people. But as Jesus took them, what he did for them, it was just to put the seed in them. And that seed was able to produce big man of God. The whole job was to take a seed to plant it in them and after a time that seed produce now what what we see it was the job of the king of the kingdom it was jesus himself so when a person is telling you that seek first the kingdom of god the person should be telling you that first hear the word of god receive the seed of heaven and that is the seed of heaven when you have enough of it that will produce a tree in you every seed that comes from heaven has the power to produce every word of god inside the word of god 
which is a seed because they the all word of God they call it a seed inside the word of God there is power there is demonstration there is glory there is wonders of God but the seed first has to be planted and when the seed is planted the seed has to be watered and then the seed will produce in the book of uh, Mark 4, the Bible tells us that the people, there are a group of people who heard the word. And as they heard it, the word didn't produce. The word didn't produce much. As it didn't pro why it didn't produce much? Because inside the heart, there were so many stuff. And all those stuff in the heart were able to, to cover, to kill the word of God. The Bible tells us in many places that the word of God is a, a seed that cannot be corrupt. But in the, in the story of Mark 4, we can see how the sower, the farmer, planting the seed and how the devil come to eat the seed the book say when you read in the book of mark it tell us that immediately as soon as the seed was planted immediately that thing is stolen immediately because the devil will not live like five hours the seed inside of you five hours no if the seed go inside of you it will produce and every time when the seed of god is planted and every time the seed of god produce fire and the fire always destroy the work of the devil that is why the enemy comes immediately to steal the word as soon as the word is planted, the Bible tells us, as soon as the word is planted, the enemy comes to steal it. He doesn't wait. He doesn't wait. He will not give a chance for 24 hours. No. If you receive the word and the word spend 24 hours in your heart, the word will produce miracle. The word will produce healing. The word will produce mighty, mighty thing. That is why, as soon as the word is planted, as soon as the devil come to steal it, that is what um, the book of Mark tell us. Now, as for us children of God, we have to understand those stuff. That first, when uh, most of the time, people say to, to people that, oh, seek first the kingdom of God. They are saying it without the understanding of what Jesus Christ was saying to us on that day. And especially, this is when the, the scripture is most, most of the time people use that scripture. D during this period of uh, uh, coronavirus, people are, this is what people are telling the pastor to preach. Oh, you pastor. You have to preach on the kingdom of God. Saying what? That preach the kingdom of God so that if when people are sick, they will hear the gospel of the kingdom of God and then they will die, they will go to heaven. In the mind, most people, when they say that, that's, we, you have to look what is in the mind of the person. That is what is in the mind. That, oh, this period, we have to preach the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so if this is the coronavirus, that's the period to preach the, uh, the kingdom of heaven. What did we preach before? Because if before we didn't preach the kingdom of heaven, it, during this period, you will not be trained enough to be able to preach the kingdom of heaven. So when we are saying the preach the kingdom of heaven, first is the demon of fear, that yeah, and then the people think that yeah, I will come and I'll preach the kingdom of heaven. And as I preach the kingdom of heaven, and the person will hear the kingdom, the message, oh, I've heard the message of heaven. Now I can die in peace to go to heaven. And that's not even the word of God. 
That's a pure lie of the devil. The word of God. There is no death in the preaching of the word of God. When a person hears the word of God, the word of God has to produce healing. We don't preach the word of God so that people will die to go to heaven. That is not the word of God. The word of God, every time, when a person hears the word of the kingdom, the person becomes strong. Every time, when a person hears the good word of God, the good word of God can only produce healing. Every The Bible tells us that somebody came to touch the king of the kingdom. Just the fact that the person touched the king of the kingdom, the person was healed. And now you want us to preach the gospel because people are dying and then so that people can die in peace. That that even the stuff is not even, it, the, you don't find that in the Bible. The word of God, especially the word of the kingdom, when it's come on you, Jesus said to us, pray this way. That your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning that if in true I'm preaching the kingdom of heaven. If I'm preaching Jesus Christ. Is I am preaching the same thinking that we have in heaven. How the people in heaven are thinking right now. It is what Jesus wants us to preach it right now. Right now in heaven they are not sick people in heaven they are not broke people in heaven they are not people sorrow people with sorrow in heaven there is no sorrow in heaven and there is no crying in heaven now if those things are not in heaven they are not in heaven because of the king of the kingdom because himself jesus he has done the job in heaven the peace the king of peace has done the peace in heaven he has done all the healing in heaven that is why he wants us to bring uh, the healing down on earth the kingdom the gospel is not to preach to people so that they can die remember this prophet he went in a valley the valley was full of bones bones of dead people and god told him prophesy and when uh, the prophet start to prophesy the heaven the dead are to raise the all the bones as they were hearing the good word of god the bones were coming together as they kept on hearing the word of god the 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 flesh came as they kept on hearing the word of god the breath of god came in them and the people stood up it was a big army the preaching of the word job tell us this that at the sound of the word which is the sound of water even if a tree is cut the water bring life back to the tree and the tree grow 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 and become a big tree now the word of god is not to send people to heaven that is not the idea when Jesus Christ was preaching, no day Jesus Christ preached to people and the people went to heaven. No, he was preaching them. He preached the, all the, the, the disciples and the disciples stayed there with him. Jesus went to heaven and the disciples stayed on earth to preach more of the kingdom. So the kingdom come first to give us a life. When God created men on earth he didn't create men so that men will fall sick or men will fear that i am on earth i am fearing oh i am fearing i am fearing oh god please take me take me take me take me to heaven take me to heaven no god will not take you to heaven like that because first you are fearing and he will not take you because he doesn't want you to to go to heaven and start to preach fear in heaven no there is no fear in the spirit of God. So as it is time for us to leave this world. We are not supposed to leave the world like oh 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 God thank you thank you. 
on earth I have so many trouble, so many problems. Now who thank you for taking me to heaven? That is not the idea of the word of God and that is not the idea of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, it come on us as a seed. When you eat the seed of the kingdom of God, you become strong like David. You become strong like Samson. You become strong like Gideon. It is the power of God that enter in us. Now, if you really want to go to heaven, you can go to heaven. But you don't go to heaven sick. You don't go to heaven because of coronavirus come on you. And then you say, oh pastor, coronavirus has come on me. Pray for me so that I can go to heaven. That is not how you go to heaven. The word of God come on you first to heal you. When you are healed, then you say, okay, I am healed. I am strong. I am not broke. Now I can go to heaven. And then you go to heaven with all the strength. Jesus Christ, when he went to heaven, he didn't go to heaven because they beat him up. No. He didn't go in heaven because they kill him. No. The people kill him. And after he died, after three days, he came back to life. He said, yeah, you people, you kill me. You cannot kill me. I am live and the resurrection. It is me. So you cannot kill me. And then he came back to life. And when he came back to life, he didn't run straight to heaven and say, oh, people don't have kill people. Let me go back to my father so that they don't kill me again. No, the Bible tell us Jesus resurrected doesn't die again. So this is what I wanted to share with us today, that most of the time when people say that, oh, please preach the kingdom. You people, you're not preaching the kingdom. You're not preaching the kingdom. First, they don't know what the kingdom is. That's why they're saying, oh, oh, pastor, you're not preaching the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Do you know that? First, the heaven that most people say heaven, 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 heaven. We, when we will go to heaven. We are not going to go to heaven to live in heaven forever. Heaven is not forever. So as you are thinking one minute, what are just from saying? I will give you one minute to think about that. Yes, that was one minute. So heaven is not forever. As people say that we are going to run to heaven and we are going to go to live in heaven forever. Heaven is not forever. Why am I saying that? If you read in the book of Revelation, the Bible tells us, that Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, will come down on earth. The very city of God will leave heaven to come to live here on earth. God himself is not going to stay in heaven forever. God wants to live on earth. Jesus wants to live on earth. All the angels, they want to live on earth. But people on earth want to run from earth to go to heaven. The all city of heaven, we are going to go to heaven. For only 1,000 years. After the 1,000 years. We are going to come back. All of us to live on earth. In the story. That they call salvation. If you have a question. You can ask me. And I will reply later on. So. In the in the, the, the story of salvation. What they call salvation. They say, this is what they tell about salvation. In the story we have salvation. That most of the time. We, just, we don't ever take care of it. The Bible tells us that the angels look into the story of salvation. The angels are in heaven, but they are looking in the story that we call salvation. Because for them, it is a story that, that surpasses all understanding. For angels, I'm telling you for, for angels, the angels, those in heaven, they are saying that this story surpass all understanding that's why the angel are in heaven but every time they are looking on earth looking at the story of salvation looking at god in a dust god took dust and formed us from dust now in the dust god came to abide in dust he came in the dust he created men from dust he took glory he put in dust so that we, though we are, were created from dust, we can live a life of glory. This is the will of God. When Goliath came to insult the whole army of Israel, David could have come also to look at them as they are insulting them, say, ha, let Goliath keep insulting us. We, the children of Israel, when we die, 
we will go to heaven. You can insult us as we want. You can kill us as you want. We are going to go to heaven. That is not the idea of heaven. The idea of heaven is David, the small boy, the little boy, will kill the big man. And that is the story that the all heaven are watching. If it was a match of football, it is God cheering on David. This is my son. The all 40 days when Goliath was insulting God, he was insulting God, insulting Israel, insulting the all army of God. God was there. What can I do? What can I do? The angel was there. God, do you want us to go and kill him? God was, no, 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 no. This is not a match. Let's see. Let's see. Do I have a son? Who understand? Do, do I have one, just one, who understand the story of glory? Who understand my way of thinking? That is what God was on the throne. He was like, is there a boy? Is there a boy who can take the shame away of my name? As they were insulting God, God could not enter in the fight and kill Goliath for himself. No, it is against the law. It is a rule. You cannot use the rule. No. But he was there. He was there. He was there. And then when David came, as David was speaking, as David was boasting, say, who is this guy speaking against the army of God? God was, yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. David was like, come on, David. Come. The God was cheering on David. He was like, go on, son. Go on, son. And when David went against Goliath, that is when the all heaven all the angels were beyond David. No angel could have gone before to kill Goliath. But all the angels were beyond David when he was going to Goliath. So on that day, even just David used his breath. Even if that day, if he say, die, Goliath were going to die. Why? Because the heaven were there to support anyone. Who understand. So that is what I wanted to share with you today. So my time is up. And I want us to pray. I want us to pray before I, I, I send back uh, the word to pastor. I want us to pray according to the word of God. Pray with me at this moment. And say to God. God show me your heaven. Let the seed of heaven in me grow. The seed of heaven is already in you, but it has to grow to come out even in your mouth, to come out even when there is a giant, even when there is a big demon as coronavirus, the seed of heaven in you has to come out and speak big of your God. Pray with me in the name of Jesus. Pray the revelation of heaven. Pray with me the revelation of heaven. In your life pray with me the revelation of heaven the demand in my old father this is the heaven I want there is no fear in heaven there is no darkness in heaven there is no trembling in heaven there is nothing that can scare me on earth because I'm of heaven I am of heaven I am of heaven I am of heaven there is nothing there is nothing in this world that can scare me. I am not supposed to be scared because I have the seed of heaven in me. I have the seed of heaven in me. I am not supposed to fear. I am not supposed to fear. Nothing should scare me. Nothing should scare me because I am the seed of Abraham. Because I am the seed of Abraham. Nothing, nothing, nothing should be able to to make me fear oh because i am the seed of abraham i am born of god i am born of god i am born of god i am born of the father in the mighty name of jesus oh we thank you lord